Thank you. A few years ago, I was in Spain, literally running for my life. More specifically, I was running from bulls. It was a terrifying experience. It wasn't fun at all. <laughs> I'm very grateful to have made it out alive, and I don't suggest that you try it at home. <laughs> and while you may never do something as crazy or ridiculous as run with bulls, I do believe there are moments in our lives when we find ourselves running. Perhaps we're running away from our fears or our past or our doubts or our insecurities. Or we're running towards a vision that we have for the future. Today, I want to share a few snapshots of the vision that I've been running towards since this day. You see, I was having the time of my life in Spain, enjoying the beach, eating wonderful food, and I got an email from a good friend. This friend just happened to be in the Peace Corps. And she was volunteering in Morocco. And without giving it too much thought, which I probably should have done, this is a common theme here, <laughs> I decided to hop on a plane and go to Morocco. It was a beautiful and enchanting country with a very warm and resilient people. But I had a few experiences there that really changed my life. You see, everywhere we went, we would be followed by these adorable little children. And they would always tug on my pant leg or pull on my shirt, and they would ask for money to get something to eat. And I remember so desperately wanting to help these children. But I, I knew that I didn't have enough money to help all of them. And I knew that just giving them money would not solve the problem. And I kept wondering, why in the world aren't these kids in school? It's the middle of the day. And so as I took my plane ride home, I was haunted by the faces of these children. And a question kept playing in my mind over and over again. Should you focus on making money, or should you focus on making a difference? I decided to do a little bit of research when I got home on the big issues affecting children in developing countries. And I learned that something as simple as a glass of water can make a world of difference in a child's life. You see, every day, thousands of children around the world die because the water they drink is contaminated. This is a totally preventable problem. And each and every day, many more children around the world get sick and have to miss school because the water they drink is contaminated. And each and every day, even more children around the world are forced to miss school because they have to collect water for their families. And so they're forced to make this ridiculous choice between school and survival. And so with this in mind, I sat down at a coffee shop one day with my good friend Aaron, and we just began to brainstorm ideas for projects we could develop to help bring clean water and a brighter future to kids around the world, kids like the children I met in, in Morocco. And after a lot of caffeine, you know, we had an idea, and we said, let's start a soap company, and let's sell great soap here, in the United States and give a portion of each purchase to help bring clean water to kids in developing countries. And let's call this little soap company Life Soap. So when I got into this, I, I thought success looked something like, like this. <laughs> Simple enough, just takes a little bit of time. I quickly learned <laughs> that our journey was a series of peaks and valleys. So our first goal was to get one customer. We're <laughs> overachievers here. <laughs> <laughs> we 
We said, you know, I'd be so happy if we could just get one customer. And so we put together this terrible little website, and we sent out an email to all of our friends and family, and we sat back and we waited. And we waited and we waited. And lo and behold, we didn't meet our goal. <laughs> we crushed our goal. We got five customers. <laughs> it gets better. I quit my job. <laughs> Again, I don't suggest you try this at home. <laughs> but it was an exhilarating time. And a few months later, we decided to really go all in and pack up everything and move to South America to follow this adventure. We wanted to set up clean water partnerships down there. And it was an amazing, amazing time. But a few months into this trip, I got a little homesick. You see, it was my first time being away from my family for such an extended period of time, and I missed the holidays, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and all of the great food and fellowship with the people that I love and care about. But have no fear, things got better. A few months later, we got an email out of the blue when we're living in Argentina from the folks at Oprah Magazine, and they said they, were, they wanted to run our story. I was so excited. I was jumping around. I partied for like a week straight. <laughs> I called my mom on Skype. I said, Mom, you'll never believe what happened. We're going to make it. It's going to be great. Well, a few months after that, I came home. And I was dead broke and deeply depressed. Now, I thought I was broke when I was a college student. But let me tell you, college student brokenness has nothing on entrepreneur brokenness. <laughs> OK. I remember eating ramen noodles and, and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches like every day. I have so many recipes and ways that you can prepare these things. I can probably, my next book will be a cookbook on ramen noodles and, and sandwiches. But in the, in the darkest hour, in the depths of my despair, I had an aha moment, an epiphany that really changed everything. You see, everybody calls what we do a social venture. That is, some organization that exists to solve some sort of social challenge. And while that may be true, I quickly learned that in order for us to ever have a meaningful, positive impact, we must first and foremost develop a sustainable venture. You see, if we can develop a company that truly meets the needs of our customers around the United States, and if we can do that in a way that is profitable, not just in the short term, but in the long term as well, then we can give to bring clean water to children around the world. And not just as a one-time grant, but month after month, year after year, in a way that is meaningful, and sustainable. And so we reframed our business as a venture social. And with this new perspective in mind, we re-engineered the company from the ground up. And slowly but surely, things began to change. Things began to move in the positive direction. And a little over a year later, we found ourselves in Nicaragua, down in Central America, visiting our first set of clean water projects. We were able to help fund wells and latrines, or restrooms down there at two schools. And as we were visiting the schools and meeting with the teachers and talking with the children, we came across this second grade student. And her particular school had been without water for more than six months. And so we asked her, you know, without restrooms and water at your school, where do you go to the restroom? And without blinking an eye, she said, El Monte, the, the bush. And it broke my heart to hear this coming from this little girl. And then it brought me back to the faces and the stories of those children that I had met in Morocco. But then at that moment, I smiled, because things had finally come full circle. And no, we haven't solved the clean water crisis for children around the world. But for this girl, and for 300 of her classmates, we've made a world of difference. And we're just getting started. This is only the beginning. And so I encourage you to chase your vision, because you, you just might reach it. Dr. Farr Gray once said, it's amazing what you can do when you don't know what you can't do. 
And so I get up every day and I chase this vision. And from time to time, I still ponder the question, should you make money or should you make a difference? I don't have the answer for you today. But perhaps, my friends, we've been asking the wrong question all along. What if we asked, how can we find ways to make money while making a meaningful difference? You see, my friends, that's a question that I believe is worth asking. And my hope, my prayer, is that together we can develop some sustainable solutions.